Okay, welcome everybody. It's lovely to see you all. Um, please, as I said, if you can put your, your camera on once you've finished your coffee and your exercise regimes, please do, it's lovely to see faces. So um, this is our franchise webinar. I'm going to share my screen with you. Okay. Can everyone see that okay? Yep. Yep, I'm going to go it's up to the top. Mode. It's in notes. It's in, um, yeah, that's a flat note mode, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. So, could franchising be the new business for you? That's what we're talking about today. Um, so first of all, just to introduce us, a lot of you know about us at Work Avenue, we are here to help people earn a living. We have an employment team that help people to get jobs. We, Joanna and myself, we're, we're the business team who help people who uh, want to set up a business or have a business and help need help in any aspects of that business. Um, we also have a lot of franchising expertise in the room. We have Stuart Fisher. Stuart, give a wave if you don't mind. Stuart has been running um, a Recognition Express franchise for 12 years. Uh, they provide branded promotional wear, promotional products, um, and promotional personalized merchandise. So I will be referring to, to Stuart throughout the, uh, the webinar for his expertise. We also have Michael, Michael Curtis. Would you mind giving away, Michael? Uh, I, I obviously don't have a camera, but whatever, yes. Okay, Michael's there. So Michael, is um, he has his own chauffeur business but he has run a call quick franchise for almost 10 years. So I'll be asking Michael, please chip in with your expertise as well. It's all very helpful. And we also have um, Stuart Rubenstein, if you don't mind giving us a wave, Stuart. So Stuart has expertise from the point of view of the franchisor, as opposed to the franchisee, which is Stuart, Michael, and my own um, experience. So that'll be very interesting to hear from Stuart. We might ask him at the end when we have our dedicated question section, what it's like to take an existing business and franchise it out. And I'm Kim Davidson, so I'm the business advisor here with Joe Sadie at Work Avenue, but I've been running my own franchise for nearly 15 years now. Um, it's an exercise classes for children franchise. Um, so we've all got a very mix of different experiences and we will talk about them. This is what we'll cover. I've told you who we are. We're gonna talk about what is franchising? What does it actually mean? What kind of franchise opportunities are out there? How much do they cost? The range is, is, is very wide. What are the pros and cons of buying a franchise? What does a good franchise opportunity look like? What should you really be looking for when, you, when you're looking for one? If you've found your, your franchise opportunity, what due diligence should you be checking? What should you check is in place before you part with any money? And where to look? Please feel free ask questions throughout um, you can either take yourselves off mute and, and ask a question or please put it in the chat we'll um, Joe's going to be uh, uh, head of questions and she will ask questions as they come up or if they're um, more relevant to the question section at the end we'll save them till the end so what is franchising you probably lots of you know what franchising is uh, but in case you don't it's a business model when the business owner who is the franchisor licenses the rights to use everything associated with that business, the name, the branding, the operations, the knowledge, the know-how to an independent person who is the franchisee. And that franchisee pays, pays a franchisor money for that. They buy it and they pay a franchise fee. This helps them both. So the franchisee gets a business, that's, that's a tried and tested model. The franchisor is helped to grow their business without investing lots of extra money in it themselves. Um, and in return, the franchisee gets lots of support and guidance and training, as well as the tried and tested business model. So, what kind of franchise can I buy? You can see from this list that pretty much anything you would have an interest in has a franchise opportunity. Food, children's activities, cleaning, flowers, pets, clothes, furniture, fitness. Um, it's very easy to find a franchise 
in a, in a, in a sector that you might be interested in. This, this list is by no means exhaustive. Um, and I will tell you later on where to find further examples. So how much does a franchise cost? Well, it can cost anything from about 5,000 pounds up to about a million pounds if you were to want to buy a, a well-known fast food restaurant. But I've given you some examples of, of what kind of franchises you could get for the different amounts of money. Now, these amounts of money vary because they might include premises. You might be buying a gym, you might be buying a coffee shop, you might be buying a nursery. Equipment, well, you might need equipment for a, a coffee shop, for a coffee van. You might need equipment for a children's um, activity, stock, food, coffee, cleaning products. So these are some examples of the different prices, you, the different costs you might pay for a franchise and the kind of things some of them, some of the different franchise opportunities will be, you can get cheaper ones or, or more expensive ones, depending on the size of the area you're buying and also whether they, they come with, with equipment and stock. Um, I won't go through all of these. You will get the slides to all of this at the end so you can look, uh, look in more detail. Also, if you want to see even more opportunities at each price range, look on Franchise Direct and the link is later on. Um, the payments that you pay come in two, two types of payments. The initial purchase fee, which, which will be a big lump sum you will use to buy the franchise, which includes the, the setup costs and the training that you will receive from the franchise all. And then you'll pay a monthly franchise fee or license fee, um, which can either be a fixed amount or it can be a percentage of your income. And this will include head office functions, any marketing that the head office do for you. Stuart, Michael, anything to add at this stage? Anything from your experience that you'd like to add? Um, from my experience, when I was looking at franchises, um, my franchise was the, the fee, which included a lot of equipment to, to brand things like mugs and T-shirts and things like that. And um, I made soon after I bought the franchise with all the equipment, I, I did decide that I didn't really want to do all the branding. Um, I don't want to be, didn't want to be sitting there at 11 o'clock at night trying to print up somebody's logo, um, trying to make sure it was the right color green or whatever. So unfortunately, you know, within my franchise fee, I had a load of equipment, which I, and I'm, I'm not sorry now, even 12 years later, um, but I wish at the time, I don't think it would have made any difference that I would have said to the franchise or, yeah, I'm happy to, but I, you know, I don't want the um, the equipment. But I don't think I don't think that was an option at the time. But it might be nowadays. It might be worth considering whether, if you're going to buy equipment, whether you're up to doing using the equipment or just, you know, because obviously when you've got a new franchise, you want to go out and get the sales. You want to get the business going. Uh, so it's you know, some people love it. Some people seem love. You know, getting on with yeah so it's something to think about when you're buying a franchise are you want going to want to do every aspect and is there an option for slightly tailoring it to your yeah because you can farm out the, you can farm out all the production to um to whoever you know so yeah um michael anything any any of your expertise yeah. you'd like to chip in with yeah when i went into corporate they did not want you to know how to print they wanted you to run the business to go out and sell to, 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 to run your business. I mean, it was useful that you knew how quickly a press could run, so how long it would take to produce a job and how to calculate the cost of a job. But I had never in 10 years put my hand on a printing press to, and got ink on my fingers. So it's a different setup. I mean, we bought into a bit, uh, uh, we bought off of another franchisee who wanted out, and that's a second route. Um, Call Quick, I know, has changed a lot because their head franchise from America ran out and everybody went independent. But I loved it because what I liked about it was that you made something and you put it in a box and you took it to somebody. Yeah. And Call Quick were a very good franchise. They asked you before you went into it, they sent you to, to look at, talk to three franchisees to make sure you knew what you were getting into. Absolutely, um, 
Yeah. And actually, that's I'm going to come on to that later on. That's part of the due diligence. Speak to as many franchisees as you can. Um, OK, so let's look at the pros and cons of buying a franchise as opposed to coming up with your own business idea and setting up by yourself. So the pros of buying a franchise. So if you want to run your own business, but you don't know how to get started, I it did, hadn't occurred to me to, buy, to start my own business until I came up with, until I found out about my um, stretch and grow exercise classes. And it just fell into place. It was exactly right for me in every way. And it was, the, it was a brilliant, brilliant thing to do. And I absolutely loved it, but I wouldn't necessarily have done it had, had I not discovered the franchise. Tried and tested model, well, you know, you know from the franchisor's experience and the franchisee's experience that it works and how it works. Um, the startup stage is much more simple than it would be if you came up with your own business idea and set it up by yourself. You don't have to necessarily write a business plan. You don't have to come up with the product and create a prototype and do market research. It's all been done for you. The franchisor has done all that for you. Um, it can be a recognized name, as you saw from the list a couple of slides back, lots of those names are recognized, and that always helps. If, if you're well known already, it helps, um, helps to get new business. Um, help and training in all aspects of running a business. This is something you don't get if you set up by yourself. You have the franchise all there to help you. You have franchisees who've been through it as well, um, and hopefully there should be ongoing training. Marketing and advertising, well, this should hopefully be done at a national level so with bigger budgets and will be much will be very helpful much um, easier than if you're spending it by yourself and doing it on a local level um, economies of scale so if you're buying products so Stuart or, or your equipment for um, for the branding and um, uh, Michael I'm sure your printing equipment and for me all our props to, to do um, exercise classes for children if we buy them in big in bulk, as all the franchisees, obviously we get a, a reduced rate. So better purchasing power than you would have on a, in a, a small business by yourself. Ongoing support, help and, franch and guidance from the franchisor and community of franchisees. I mean, we have WhatsApp groups for the franchisees. It's just lovely to, to have colleagues in a way who are going exact, doing exactly the same as you, um, know what you're going through and you can just talk things through with them. Um, and it takes away a lot of the thinking involved in a new business. Um, you don't have to work out how to do the market, marketing, how to do the sales, how to do recruiting. You should basically be given something of a manual and training in how to do all those things. And you just need to follow the examples that are given. But don't think for a second it's an easy way out. You still need lots and lots of energy and enthusiasm for doing that. Um, any, anything else from you, Stuart or Michael, on pros of buying a franchise? Um, yeah, I think um, what drove me towards franchising was, I mean, 12 years ago, I was made redundant and um, I really thought about, um, I wanted to run my own business in some shape or form. And the thing that really, and because I was in sort of a financial background, so moving into a marketing background was a complete bungee jump out of my comfort zone. Um, but... Um, it was what really, I, the thing was marketing really. I really, you know, if you've got a new business, especially in a competitive world, you've got to be able to market your business. So that's what drove me towards looking at franchises. Um, and I wanted obviously a franchise that I could be my own boss. Um, and they were just, and like you say, it, it's really helpful because you're just running your own business. They don't give you any help in terms of new clients or anything like that you've got to generate that all yourself but in terms of like in my business we have like an annual brochure with a lot of our products in and because we've got hundreds of well even thousands of products um especially when you start off you don't know the detail about every product we've got many types of different branding that we can do especially on clothing etc mm -hmm. so yes agreed it was a great help um in terms of marketing um support is there if you want it and if you don't want it you just carry on but I, yeah you were right about the thing about other franchisees because you always you run into the same issues and the other thing is from a positive point of view is bouncing off ideas um you know as is a very competitive industry you can just go online and you could buy branded pens from but um 
it's more about being a little bit more different, adding a bit more value. And, yeah, yeah. you know, you can bounce off ideas um, with franchises. So, yeah. but you're right in also just, it's, it's hard work. Uh, it is. You running know. your own business is always going to be hard work. So yeah. running a franchise yeah. is, is no different. It still requires lots of enthusiasm and you've still got to love what you do. Um, I agree. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Yeah. Yeah. Well, when you get on to the negatives, that throws up a couple of negatives. <laughs> well, well at, now you come to mention it. Let's look at the cons of buying a franchise. Um, well, the costs. I mean, the costs of setting up your own business can be can be very high, but you can see by, from the um, slide where I listed all the costs, you do have to pay a big, um, big uh, lump sum at the beginning to buy the franchise. And then you will have monthly fees, either a set amount or a percentage. Um, and you might feel after several years of, of running it where you know how to do it, you, you could do it backwards, that actually it might start feeling a bit annoying that you're still paying for the luxury of it but that's the way it is when you buy a franchise, you have to do that. Following the franchise rules, which can, can be restrictive, you may feel like you don't want to um, use their marketing materials or use their branded apparel. You might want to make your own, but you might not be allowed to. Those are the rules and you have to follow them. Even if you think you can do better, sometimes you have to just do what, what you're supposed to do. Reputation isn't always in your control. So if one of the other franchisees does something wrong and affects the reputation of the business, it could affect your business too. Hopefully, if they're not too near, it, it, it could, you know, you could, it might not affect you, but it could. And it's not always in your control because lots of people are working with the same brand name. You are tied into a fixed term. Some franchisees you are allowed to, to you can sell within the, front of the fixed term or just stop and walk away. But with some, you will be tied in and you cannot you cannot walk away until that fixed term is up. My fixed term was, was five years. Um, and, uh, and yeah, you sort of, you have to renew every five years. Michael has already has um, told us that he bought an existing franchise, but it can be difficult selling an existing franchise. Um, it's hard to sell franchises because of the, the fixed term. You don't always know that it's going to be renewed. So somebody might be put off buying a franchise if it's going to run out in two years and there's no guarantee they can renew it. Um, also, they might be put off because of the ongoing franchise fee. Um, and you don't always get what it's worth. You might build up the business to be worth a certain amount and you might not get that amount for it when you're trying to sell it. As I mentioned before, it still requires loads of energy and hard work. This isn't really a con because this is the situation when you're running a business. You need loads of energy. It, you've got to put the work in and you've got to really be enthusiastic and love what you do. So that's the same with a franchise and any kind of business. And then these last two cons are exactly the same for running a business. So in some cases no work, no pay. If you take a holiday, if you're off sick, if it's a bank holiday, if it's a day you're not working, you might not get paid. It might, be, it might not be the situation if you have staff who can cover you or if you can swap days, but there, there's no sick pay, there's no holiday pay. Um, you don't get paid on bank holidays. If you don't work, you don't get paid for, for some of the situations. And it can be very solitary working alone. I know I found that going to teach in nurseries and then coming back home and doing all the admin at home. And um, I know Stuart, you've mentioned that as well, that it can be quite solitary. It's the same with, with setting up a business on your own. So that's no different, but actually, as we've mentioned, having the network of franchisees to chat to does feel a little bit more like you've got colleagues. You're not in the same room. You're not even often in the same city, but you still have them uh, there to talk to. Um, so, Michael and Stuart, any, any comments on the, the cons of buying a franchise? Michael, do you have any con comments on the pros or cons? Um, I mean, when we went in, yes, we did a deal on the existing one, but there were lots of fees that, I mean, it was something, we had to go to Houston for three weeks for training, and that was a fortune. Mm -hmm. um, you can, but they, they, they do tell you all about it up front, um, I have very few cons about going into franchising because you can go into a business that you know nothing about. I knew nothing about printing and, and you could make a living. And we did for 10 years and we only came out of it because of personal matters. Otherwise we'd I'd probably still be in it. 
Yeah, fantastic. Thank you. Stuart, any comments on the cons? Um, <clears throat> yeah, I mean, my fixed term is 10 years um, as opposed to your five years. I mean, the only thing is I think of the, the, fr the franchise agreement when you actually read it through and um, it, it was all geared towards the franchise or there's no, with, from my personal experience, there's no way of amending the franchise agreement. Not saying it's not fair, but if you wanted to try and amend the terms, they weren't having it. They said, look, we've got other franchisees and there's no way we're going to amend it for the percentage you have to pay. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I mean, the potential difficulty selling, I mean, I haven't gone down that route yet, but obviously the person that you're selling the business to has to be agreed by the franchisor, um, which is, is a good safeguard in a way because um, that other con there, the reputation issues, I mean, again, I've not experienced this, uh, but um, it really is down to the franchisor to make sure that they actually bring in the right people, they, that they, you know, uh, you know, go through all the, the testing and everything. Um, sure. The no work, no pay. Yeah, that's a big con for me because there's many a time that I've, you know, my wife said, look, we're going away for a week's holiday and, you know, I could be sitting around the pool somewhere and I'm on the phone trying to sort out a delivery or a client wants a, a quote, um, you know, because we are a small business. There's only a couple of us. Um, so, and, you know, it's uh, especially when you come to like bank holidays and things, you know, you think oh, everybody else is getting paid and I'm sitting here, you know, not. But, you know, that's as you say, that's the thing about working for business, you know, working on your own business. Um, the solitary, I'm not too bad about. I mean, I do like, I, you know, I quite like it, actually. <laughs> that's one reason to get away from an office environment is all the politics and all the people that have got their own issues. Um, so, uh, yeah, no, I quite like that. That's yeah. a pro to me. <laughs> Does anyone have any questions yeah, at this Kim, stage? Kim, we have got a question from oh, sure. Jonathan to say, which I'm not sure if any of you will know or not, do franchises qualify for funding available to other businesses like a government small business loan or maybe a, to cover the setup and the ongoing costs? So can you, do you know if you can get a loan for that? Um, can I answer that one? Sure, go ahead, Michael. When when we was when we were going in, uh, we were organized. I mean, there, there were loads. You could always get a small business loan because you are a business. But that the franchisor introduced us to a bank, and we needed some 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 funding, and and they just set it up. That it was almost pre-approved. So it's very you know if you need to borrow money the franchise or made it very easy for you to get it because it was a it was an acknowledged business so we went in the the guy the manager at that west had a look at us and said yeah that'll do so it, it, it was fine and it was easy to get money yeah, yeah. yeah. oh sorry sorry michael yeah oh, sure. um no similar experience um so my franchise was part funded by myself, part funded by a loan. Um, and again, like Michael said, you know, I think it was Lloyd's at the time, I'm not sure. Um, but because um, the actual banks, they rate fran franchises uh, up to certain, you know, they have certain categories for certain franchises, depending on who they are, the industry they're in, how long they've been going, how many franchisees. So you know, whether they're an A, a double A, a triple A, whatever. So, um, yeah, it is quite easy to get, a, you know, a loan. Um, yeah. To get grants, I'm not so sure about uh, in terms of new business. I, I haven't really gone down that route. I hope that answers your question, Jonathan. You can go off mute. Yeah, very helpful. Good. <laughs> Any other questions that we should answer at this point? Stuart, is there anything you'd like to add at this point or are you happy to wait until later on? Do yeah. feel free to chip in if there's anything Stuart, you want to. We've got Stuart R. Um, I, <laughs> just to underline what was said about banks, which is um, for people setting up a business or setting up a business as a, um, as a franchisee, banks will look more favorably to franchisees. Um, the, the, the simple statistics on 
the number of new businesses that fail and the number of new franchisees who fail with their new business is so staggeringly um, positive towards franchises um, that, that banks are not only favorable, but they look for franchise business. Um, and um, it, it was good to hear Lloyd's getting a mention because Lloyd's are, are so positive about franchises. Um, it's, it, um, I'm not with Lloyd's, but everything that comes across from Lloyd's is, is so positive. Mm -hmm. um, they will do what they can. And most franchisors will have an agreement with a bank and will just say, just go and speak to the bank and the bank will say, almost always will say yes. So it's an easy way to get funding. Fantastic. Thank you. That's really useful. Um, okay, so. Let's move on. Okay. So what does a good franchise opportunity look like? Well, the figures need to look good. Uh, you need to, to get a, a hold of some figures from the franchisees and see that they've all done well. They're all growing. They might grow at their different rates. They might want different sizes of businesses. They might put different amounts of effort in themselves, um, but they need to be growing and they need to be happy about where they are. Um, you look for a return on investment, an investment within two to three years. So however much money you put into buying your franchise, you would want to get that back within two to three years. And you want to be able to see that the franchisees have done that. You want to see that the business is growing. You want to know that there are new franchisees all the time, that the business is attracting new people and the franchisor is seeking out new franchisees and attracting them. Um, an open and honest approach, you really need that. You want to know that the people you're going to be working with and, and needing help from are there for you and, and they, they will do as they say they will do. And again, you can, you can find out this from speaking to franchisees. The friendly, professional and helpful network of franchisor and franchisees. Well, as we've mentioned, it's so useful having that network to bounce ideas off, to chat, problems through with the franchise or you want them to be at the end of the phone when you, when you have a problem talk you through it help you with it franchisees you want them to be your friends and your colleagues to really help you with with any issues you're going through like like if you were in a in an office and working with a team of people you also want to know that the franchisor involves the franchisees and respect their opinion you can find this out by speaking to franchisees you want to know that any marketing um materials, anything new that's created is run by the franchisees. The franchisees are happy to use that. They, they, you don't want to be presented with a final um, product for a marketing um, apparel or, or information pack and the franchisee says, that won't work in my area. So you really want to know that the franchisee's opinion is asked, asked of but by the franchisor and it's respected. Anything to add, anyone? Stuart, Stuart or Michael? Uh, the only thing I would add is that when I, um, when I was looking at franchise, I think there was one franchise that when I said I want to speak to other franchisees, they gave me a, uh, like five or six. And I said, no, I want the whole list of franchises and I want to pick my own. And they said, that's not possible. So I just discarded that one. Uh, so I think it is important because you know you've got you've got to pick up these scenes, signs quick quite quickly before you lay out a lot of money for a franchise. Um, the franchisor can promise you the earth and tell you what a, a fan, you know it's the best business since sliced bread. But you know you've got to try and get underneath, and you know only only by talking to franchisees, not necessarily that some you know the thing with franchisees i've noticed over the years um and in my franchise there's probably about 45 franchisees um you've got like there's it's, it's split into uh, thirds there's a top third of franchisees that are doing really well there's a middle section of franchisees who aren't doing so well and then there's franchisees that probably really shouldn't be in franchising um so you you know you can't take everything that a franchisee says, but you have to, you know, you have to make an informed decision. And I can't remember how many 
meetings I had with the franchisor, but um, they're always open. I, they're, they're always open and honest. And um, yeah, that's, I think it's really important to do a lot of research. Uh, yeah. And also research the um, industry you're moving into. Mm. You know, really look at who the competitors are, how competitive it is. What's your edge going to be if you go in? Um, you know, with my one, our franchise has been around a long time. So um, they've got some great tie ups with factories. Um, and, the, and the good thing is um, with my franchises, you don't have to buy through the franchise, the products. You go to anywhere you like. Um, but, um, you know, at the end of the day, you've got to tie up with factories that you know are going to produce the product, good quality product, good branding. It's going to get there on time. So that's a, an area that you need to be, especially in my area anyway. Sure. Anything else from Michael or Stuart? What does a good franchise opportunity look like? Oh, Michael, you're muted. Right. For me, the call quick was the one because I knew people that were in it. Um, and it was a big franchise, so it wasn't always, not all of the businesses succeeded. And there was always a couple that went, that closed down for whatever reason. Because as, as Stuart says, you know, there's 15% or a third that don't get it right. Um, but marketing, they, they did, national, we had national accounts um, and they did, it did come as a prepack. But you didn't have to do it if you didn't want to, and if you didn't feel it was right for you, they did. They they, they did it for you. They, they, maybe they mouth fed you too much, but they gave it to you. And if you wanted it, you took it. And if you didn't, you didn't. They had a great scheme where they used a telemarketing uh, company to set up appointments for you. So you went off and you sold. You know, but you gave them a target list of fifty companies, and they turn they turn in an appointment for you what 30 35 percent that you get appointments for so there was some very good stuff that came out of it It was a very good franchise in the yeah. old days i don't think it's quite what it was no i mean they do <laughs> things do change but then there will be others lots of the others will be a very good franchise opportunity right now um so Stuart has mentioned uh, quite a few of these points. Um, sorry if this looks warped on your screen, it looks a bit strange on my screen, um, but I'll talk through it. So once you've found your franchise opportunity, what due diligence should you do? What should you check? Well, the numbers, you should check that um, the numbers look right, that people's businesses are growing, that they pay back their initial outlay within two to three years. If you need to get the numbers checked by an accountant, do just to check that everything looks right and it looks like a business that is worth investing in. The culture, well, as, as Stuart said, Stuart F, if you ask for the contact details for all the franchisees and the franchisor doesn't want to give you those, you have to ask why. Because they may have had disagreements, they may not see eye to eye, but you need to hear the full picture and the franchisor needs to be open to giving you everyone's contact details and letting you hear all sides of the story. So you try and get all the details for the franchisees and then you pick, you don't have to contact them all if you have 40 something like Stuart does, um, but contact a good number of them and ask them all sorts of questions. Don't be afraid to ask difficult questions of the franchisees or the franchisor. You can, you can, um, you may feel like you're being a bit rude and obnoxious, but you are actually about to invest a lot of money and time into this business, and you are entitled to ask all the questions that that you need to know the answers to. The contract, it would be really useful to get the contract looked at by a lawyer. You don't want to buy into something and then find that if you um, if you leave it down the line, you can't do anything that's remotely like it. Um, so you've just got to check the clauses on, on what you're allowed to do once you leave the business. You will often not be allowed to do anything competing for an amount of time, but just get it checked by a lawyer just to, just to make sure it's fair. The business growth projections. Well, you want to see that the franchisor is planning to grow this business and what they and how many franchisees they plan to to, to get how many new franchisees each year and how quickly they're planning to grow. What is the deal you're getting? 
what marketing will they do for you? What kind of marketing? How much of it will they do for you? What will they provide you with? Stuart mentioned a, an annual um, magazine that they that get that they can that they provide to their franchisees um, at Recognition Express. Find out what it is you get from them and how how much they will help you. How easy is it to exit? Have any of the franchisees sold their franchise? How easy did they find it to do so? Does the franchisor help? Was the franchisor very, very particular about who they would allow to buy the business, which they should do, but within reason, you still need to sell your business and they need to be helping you. You don't want them, you don't want to hear that they've hindered anyone. Um, the area, you have to make sure that the business you're buying into is needed in that area. I had to make sure when I bought my franchise that there were plenty of nurseries and schools in the area with young enough children who'd be interested in my exercise classes. Um, I'm sure Stuart and Michael would have done the same due diligence to make sure that the area was um, in need of, of the business they were setting up. And also the competition. You want to make sure that you're not entering a flooded market. You want to make sure that there aren't loads and loads of other printing businesses, loads and loads of other um, branded merchandise business, loads of other exercise for children businesses in that area because then you're going to be really really fighting against all of them you want to make sure that there is room for your business in that area <laughs> any comments from anyone at this stage or any questions i've got a few comments go on michael number one the contract you need yeah i agree you need to look at it with us with a solicitor but you will not be able to change a dot a comma an exclamation mark <laughs> Right. That that you take it's a take it or leave it. That's my experience. They, yeah. they, 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 they know what they're doing. They can't change it because 999 other franchisees have got the same contract. Um, with regard to an accountant, we were very lucky, and, it, and it's possible that anybody going in could do it because we knew people who were in the corporate. We asked that we ended up using their accountant. So the accountant looked at the projections and the cash flows with us and told us whether it was realistic on their experience of Call Quick. Um, you talk about area, call, I can only answer for Call Quick. Call Quick always did demographics before they opened in an area. So they'd done the demographics for the area that we were in, which was actually in Hitchin near Stevenage. Um, they did it again when we went in, but the only interesting point, that, and it was very relevant at the time, is if they saw, a city, uh, I, um, I'm going to say a university town for supposition, because this is what happened. There was one guy had the whole of the university city. They then decided there was room for a second one in that city and halved his demographic area. So you need to be a little careful. But, you know, the, these are normal pitfalls of almost any business, really. Absolutely, yeah. Um, just coming back onto the contract, so you've said, in fact, all three of you have said there's no budging on the contract, but just to be aware, when I bought my franchise, my contract was as it was 15 years ago, the franchise all then changed it for subsequent franchisees. So when I came to renew after five years, it had changed and I was able to negotiate that I managed to have the same contract that I did originally. So any new clauses that were brought in after I had originally signed, I didn't have to sign because they were new since I'd taken on the business and other franchisees managed to do the same. But new franchisees had to take on the new contract as it was. Um, so you might, you can always try. As, as, um, as everyone has said, there is likely to be very little movement on the contract because all the they want the franchise all wants the franchisees to have a level playing field and all be um, having the same contract, but it's always worth asking. You never know. <laughs> okay. So where can I look to find a franchise? Well, this is just a, a small list of the um, the websites and the events that you could look at. You'll get these slides, so so this uh, you, you can refer to this afterwards. Do look at these websites. Franchise Direct is where um, I found all the um, different franchise opportunities at different costs. 
So do look at that if you want to see different franchisees that cost different amounts. And there are events, hopefully, now that we're getting back to normal, they will be live. If not, they might well be online. But do look up events because then you can actually talk to people. You can actually meet the franchise or see people face to face and see what it would be like to work with those people. So does anyone have any questions for either Stuart Fisher, Stuart Rubenstein, Michael or myself at this stage? Please do take yourselves off mute if you'd like to ask a question. Um, we've got one here um, from, I don't, what's, what's your, we've got a UY, I don't know what your name is, UY, it would be, Uri, okay, Uri, thank you. Um, are the rules which prevent other franchisees stepping on your turf and vice versa, mostly geographically based? If that's the case, unless the business is a physical location, such as a restaurant or nursery, um, is that an area of concern for many franchises in an increasingly online world? That's a really good question. Yeah. Uh, in, in, in my, sorry, go on. No, I was just going to say, Stuart, your business is very not, um, geographical base because it's language isn't it so I don't know if you want to answer that Stuart Rubens. Stuart R. Stuart R yeah. Um, we are geographically based um, for most of our business because most of our business is in sites and venues so from nurseries through schools through oh, businesses. Okay. Um, the, the, the way a um, the, the way it works is that you set up with um, a mapping company who, who map the region based on the demographics that you um, have worked out will bring the best return for franchisees. So um, we've been through um, that process recently and it's, it's a really interesting process and you set up the country um, divided into franchises and when someone buys a territory for five years, that territory is protected. And a number of franchisors will also protect neighboring territories for a period and give the franchisee the opportunity to buy a neighboring territory um, within say a six month or 12 month period as well. So there are opportunities. Um, and often what happens is maybe someone like Kim would, would think um, it's working really well in my territory, I might as well buy another one. Um, and sometimes they're neighbouring and sometimes they're not. The question was really interesting about the online stuff, because obviously when we hit COVID, uh, um, all our language clubs were closed and we went online. Um, our, our, our solution is that anything that is sold by a franchisee is theirs. Um, the, the, there's not a lot you can do about it. Um, particularly if someone could buy a course, they could be living in Seattle and buy a course. Um, so it's not even UK based. Um, I think that will become more defined over the next year or so, because um, it took a lot of people by surprise. But if you've got a territory, no one can, no one can encroach on it. That's what's protect, that's what you buy. Certainly in my situation, we bought postcodes, which as Stuart said, were worked out in terms of how many um, nurseries were within that area so and if one franchise franchisee was contacted by a nursery in someone else's area they would always ha hand it over to that franchisee um, in terms of the online situation that is definitely a question for the relevant franchisor if you are buying a business that is largely online and it could have customers all over the world you need to ask the franchisor how do you know who who is entitled to that that sale or that client Uri, does that answer your question? If you want to go off mute or maybe put your video on about yes, rules. that does. Um, thank you. Although thank um, you. it's still uh, somewhat unknown, isn't it? Um, uh, I, I want to just add to the question of that is are there opportunities from franchise companies abroad which haven't yet reached the UK, for example? Sun comes out as nice. Sorry, could you repeat that question, Array? On the on the other side of that coin, are there are there are there opportunities for franchises either which are online 
in some way or another, or franchises which are abroad and have not yet reached the UK? Um, well, there are franchise opp opportunities for franchises that are online, and I'm sure there are opportunities that are abroad. Stretch and Grow, my franchisee, franchise, was brought over from America by um, a couple who lived here and happened to see it in Ireland. Um, and I think that would just be a case of searching on the internet for franchise opportunities abroad. Um, Surely the, yes. most, the most famous one that's been bought from abroad is uh, McDonald's and Starbucks have been bought from abroad, no? Are they? Pizza Hut, KFC, all of those. Okay. So, yes. I think what are you, are you asking about specifically online fran franchise opportunities? Mainly, yes, yeah, specific, yes. Okay, that's, that, that, that really is quite a different world, and, and I, um, I, I'm not really qualified to answer that, but having spent the last couple of years looking in a lot of detail at franchises, it doesn't really exist, because the franchise is about a territory, and, and online it is about SEO, and it, it I'm not sure if there are many, maybe you could tell us, are there many online franchise companies that you know of that are, that are only online? Well, from, from my research, there were some, some things like tutoring um, yeah. are, are now existing online instead of face-to-face. -face. That, uh, that is true. I can't think of any more. But surely that was a, that was a conversion, Kim, because tutoring uh, would have won, yeah, face would have originally been, yes. yes. I mean, that, no, you're absolutely right. That's the journey we've been on in, in um, over the pandemic as well. But but I think most tutoring want to go back to face-to-face. -to -face. Um, yeah, the first vast majority do seem to be in person. Can we just um, move, can, can I ask a question of Stuart, which I've heard, um, which somebody had asked about, you know, you obviously, so you ha can you just describe your journey, Stuart? Because were you set up your business and then decided to become a franchisor? So how did that all work? Because there might be people here who are, in fact, if you want to raise your hands, who are looking to be franchisors rather than franchisees. We've got Esther there, so yeah. Um, very briefly, and, and it's actually just to go back to something that the. Um, Kim said, um, when you're looking for a franchise opportunity, you also have to think about something that fits in with your identity. Um, and because you'll be telling people that's what you do. Um, and I've been involved in language education for 30 years. And I set up um, Speak Like a Native about four years ago. And we built this model in London with, with a sort of crusading instinct to get it to the, to, to the whole country because it's something we believe in. It's so difficult um, if you're a small company to grow that way. And it's, it's how Kim described it. Um, fr franchising means we can hold hands and help people um, set up their own speak like a native wherever they are. Um, and we can afford to grow and not just grow organically. I mean, we're, we're trying to grow um, in a very commercial way, but franchising makes sense like that. So the, the key is everything that's being said, you, if you can't face a potential franchisee and answer all the questions that Kim has, has raised, you're, you're not ready. Um, so the first thing we did was we took on somebody who had created, grew, and then sold a major franchise, um, which was a, um, one you may have heard of called Swim Time, which is a, a UK-based swimming franchise. Um, th there's nothing we don't know about language, um, and we don't claim to know anything about swimming, but it was absolutely vital to us to have the guidance of um, a consultant who knew everything about franchising. The second thing, and I'd recommend this to anybody, we're not yet members of the BFA because we're quite new, um, but as soon as we can, we will be. But if you are considering being a franchisee, 
go to the bfa.org. They do a free course, which you can do online, which takes maybe two days, two afternoons, and it's every stage that you could go through that you should be thinking about if you're a franchisee. All the business side of things, how to understand um, what what cash flow means, what profit and loss is, and, and to go to go through all those things. And by the end of it, you should be able to face yourself and say, you know what, this really is for me. Um, if you are thinking of being a franchisor, they have a course for you as well. They're both free. Um, and we all did it and speak like a native and then shared our certificates that we got. Um, very proud. Uh, it's a couple of afternoons, but it, it really, it raises every question. Um, the other thing to look for, if you're considering being a franchisee, is, um, and most franchise companies have them online now, is joining a discovery day or a discovery meeting um, where they will showcase everything um, and if you get a feel for that, that's where you move on to the next stage where you can ask as many questions as you want and have a, a, a more personal approach. Um, but you've got to have um, a really good manual. You've got to, if, if you're considering be a, being a franchisor, you've got to invest in your franchise agreement. Um, we talked about the contract. The contract is called the franchise agreement. Your franchise agreement has to be watertight. It has to be done by a solicitor who knows about franchising, not who's just someone who does contracts. Um, it's got to be watertight because you will not change it. Um, it's the one thing you won't change. You may change <laughs> parts of your business. You may introduce new products. You may design new things, but you want that contract to be watertight because it has to work for you and it has to work for your franchisees. Um, and um, so you... You've got to get your franchise agreement, invest very well in that. Um, and I'd say the same to any franchisee. Don't say maybe, but 100% definite. If you're not prepared to take what you're thinking about to a lawyer and an accountant, you're not ready to have your own business. Um, and if you think it's money that you don't want to spend, you're not ready to have your own business. Um, because take that advice. And if the advice isn't what you want to hear, listen to the advice um, <laughs> because why should you know um, you're at the beginning of something? That's why you go to the experts. And again, if, if you look at the BFA's website, they actually list accountants and lawyers that they would recommend. Um, try one of them. They're all in, they're all in the franchising world. Um, we did that. I won't say who we got. And I, I just thought it was brilliant, um, the advice we got. And it just took us to a new stage. So um, look at those links that Kim gave of all the different places. And you're right, Kim, they're, they're, they've been doing virtual shows and virtual exhibitions the whole time because no one wants to miss out on making any money. Um, <laughs> and um, then go on to a discovery day or a discovery meeting and, and you can be sure they'll follow up, the franchise or will follow up. Um, ask as many questions as you want um, and that's it, really. If you can also spend time with franchisees running their business, if you get the opportunity, see them in, in action, if you can, that would be very helpful as well. Any other questions at this point? I realize we're, we're nearly coming to the end of our hour. Um, any other questions for any of us? If not, I'm gonna ask a final question of Stuart and Michael, and Stu well, both Stuarts, would you recommend franchising? Stuart Fisher, I'm gonna go over to you first. Would you recommend uh, it? Yeah, 12 years on, I'd definitely re recommend it. If, if you're the sort of person that, as I say, initially probably likes working alone, um, likes getting out, it depends what franchise you've got. My one is, you know, you've got to get out and get the business. So if you like networking with people, uh, going to networking events, joining networking organizations, it's a great way, great way of referring business. Um, yeah, I mean, I think, yeah, I am happy that I took it out. I'm happy um, with the, the industry I'm in. Um, I think one point I wanted to make um, when you were talking about areas was it's a definite thing when you're speaking to the franchisor make sure you know because there are 
you know, people are only human and people, if they, if they get an inquiry in your area for a massive order, are they literally going to pass it on to you? No, they won't. They'll, they'll want to try and do that. So you need to understand what the procedure is if somebody impinges into your area. Will the franchisor get involved? Obviously, initially, you want to sort it out between the two franchisees. But you really want some idea of where the franchisor sits on something like that. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, franchise, you know, with all due respect to the other steward, franchisors are, you know, whether they get income from franchise A, franchisee A or franchisee B, it's income to them. So um, in my opinion, in my experience, so you need to see how, what their thoughts are on it. Um, it's just something I would add on to the list when you're having that chat with the franchisor. But to Absolutely. answer your question, yeah. yeah, I'm happy I took it out. Yeah. So, yeah. Michael, would you recommend the franchise experience? You're, you're muted. We had 10 great years there. Um, you talk about working with other franchisees. Part of the training was that we spent two separate weeks with two separate franchisees in their business and they showed us how it worked before we actually went into ours. Mm. Uh, I don't know if it was intentional, but they put me into two franchisees that were top 10. So either they reckon me or I don't know, but uh, it, was, it was a great period. It, you know, it was difficult to sell, but we were a forced sale because uh, of myself and my partner who happened to be my wife, decided to split up on all, all things. So it was, a, it was a mess, but it was nothing to do with the business as such. And I would love, you know, you can go into a business that you know nothing about. My, my, this, my thing is not to get involved in the nitty gritty of production, but to get into the bigger picture of the marketing. Marketing's a science. I didn't know it was a science until I went into that. And run your business and sell, sell your business to other businesses. We were very much, and I think Stuart F is as well, a business to business thing. I think business to business is, is a very good sector to do franchising in. Yeah, agreed. Just on that, you said um, don't get involved in the nitty gritty. That obviously depends on what kind of franchise you have. Mine being exercise classes, and I was delivering the exercise classes myself, as well as trying to build up the business and get coaches on board. So I did, um, have have a real say about changing the classes, adapting them, making them my own, making them relevant to the the area, to the particular nursery or school. Uh, but yes, of course, that that depends on which one. And uh, finally, Stuart. Uh, oh, sorry, go on. A cut, quick comeback. Yeah, you're absolutely right. But it was the nitty gritty. When you're in a a, a a printing business, you don't want to print. You know, of course. that's what I was trying to say. Yeah. yeah when you when you're running an exercise class, yeah, you got to be there. Yes, you've got to want to run the business that you're running. You've got to have an interest in it. And, 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 if, and you need to have people who can help you with the bits that you're not the expert in. I think you've got to love it. I think it's stronger than that. You have to love it. Yeah, yeah, I totally agree. Stuart R., from a franchisor's point point of view, would you recommend it to potential franchisees and franchisors? Uh, I, I say, look at Michael. He lives in a stately home now. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's worked for him. It's where did I go uh, it's wrong? It's the uh, library at University College Dublin, if you wanted to know. <laughs> it's fantastic. Oh, I, I, I <laughs> ran a business that, that, that was centrally ran for nearly 20 years. Um, now we're go, um, this is going to be a franchise. I tell you the bit I look forward to the most, because we're in the early days of being a franchise. I, I look forward to when, because I love my world. I love the world of language learning. I believe in it. Um, I, I can't wait till we've got 15 or 20 franchisees and we're all having a, our conference and everyone's sharing ideas. And, and it's coming across that someone's saying, you know what, we really need a product that, that aims for this part of the market. And we go away and we develop it. Because for me, if, um, the joy of being a franchisor is going to be working with my franchisees. Um, so I think a good franchisor, just like I hope my franchisees, I don't want mine teaching languages. 
I won't mind managing other people, teaching them. Can I yeah. ask you ask you a question? Sorry. Sure. Who's who's that talking? It's Max. It's often the best way of getting me to keep quiet, Max. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, Max. Um, I, I may have missed this. Uh, apologies if I wasn't paying attention. But how long were you in your business before you started to then um, franchise it out? How um, long established it's been like it? Four years. Is that all? And was your background in languages before that, obviously? And yeah, I, I, um, I, I ran language schools for um, over 20 years, bringing people over here to learn English. Um, recognized, of course, as we all know, that um, I think the technical term is we're crap at languages in this country. Um, so just decided to turn it around uh, and set up a company to bring language learning to the UK. So um, a lifetime of experience in the industry, but four years with this company. This and was it very successful in those four years that you then decided it, you know, could um, then be We, we were just hitting success um, when COVID struck. started, but, but everything's rooted now, everything's opening up again for us. Um, we've maintained all of our past clients. I, I'm sure Kim has a similar experience that you you keep loving people for a year and, yeah. and they're ready to welcome you back. Absolutely right, yes. Um, I'm going to have to draw our, our event to a close because we've run over. I'm sorry about that. Um, please remember that we are here for any one-to-one -one business advice meetings. If anyone does have a business or is thinking of setting up a business, please come and meet with Joe or myself. Um, and there's the employment team if anyone is looking for a job um, as well. So thank you all for attending. We will send out the slides. We will also send out the chat so that you have each other's contact details and get in, can get in touch for the future. And uh, we look forward to seeing you again at our next event. Thank you, everybody. Have a lovely rest of the day. Thank you.